I'm Sloan Rockmuth with Education First Alliance, a North Carolina group made up of parents, grandparents, and teachers fighting for equal rights in education. Since our founding a year and a half ago, we have stood against bigotry in all forms, like the discriminatory view that Christians and whites are oppressors, the notion that blacks are inferior or victims, that males are a destructive force in society, and the view that women can be replaced with men in sports. But now I'm going to make a statement about another form of bigotry, a bigotry that has sparked efforts to cancel education first since we began our work here in North Carolina. It's anti-Semitism, and I cannot begin to say how dangerous it is not just to Jews, but to everyone who values freedom and humanity. If we allow anti-Semitism to flourish in our parental rights movement, that will spell the demise of our movement. What I want to do in this brief statement is to define the problem because we need clarity to get an understanding of what anti-Semitism is. And I want to tell you why anti-Semites don't believe they're anti-Semitic. First, let me define anti-Semitism. Not liking Jews is not anti-Semitism. We all have people we don't like for all kinds of reasons. Anti-Semitism is when people don't think Jews should exist with the same rights as other people that Jews have no right to exist as free and equal human beings. For us, we've had individuals take active steps to make sure that Ed First Alliance could not coexist with other organizations doing the same work. They've called our donors and partners, claiming that we are untrustworthy, greedy con artists. They've sued us. They've tried to have our events canceled. They've called the FBI and the police on us to make false reports. They've stalked me personally. Why? Not because of something that EFA has done or hasn't done. It's because I have the wrong identity for some. It's easy to hate, but very difficult to justify that hate in public. Anti-Semites like to appeal to the highest source they know. Some folks attacking EFA call themselves Christian conservatives, and they claim to appeal to their God. Uh, another one is a conservative blogger who claims she's just making sure that EFA doesn't destroy the conservative movement or the Republican Party merely by our presence on the scene. Just like CRT, anti-Semitism distills complex problems into simplicities, seeing all the fault on one side and all the victimhood on another. It sees things in black and white and it singles out one group among a hundred of possible offenders for the blame. As is the case with racism, no group who adopts anti-Semitism can ever create a free society. It's a movement hell-bent on destroying its enemies, but in the end, it destroys itself. I hope that you will join me in denouncing anti-Semitism from our parental rights movement and get rid of all other forms of bigotry. Thank you. Okay, guys, so that statement um, probably really gets you. I'm joined here by Suter Conrad, who is not only on our board, but takes an active role here for the day-to-day -day operations of Ed First Alliance. Hi, Suter. Hi. Sorry we have to meet on the, these terms. Yeah, but you know what? It's important to discuss. It's important to discuss because, you know, we haven't really been, we've talked a lot about, um, you know, anti-Christian sentiment, anti-Black sentiment, anti-white, anti-woman, anti-male. We haven't been forthcoming about the bigotry that we have faced over the last year and a half. And that's exactly what it is, it's bigotry. Yeah, we, we haven't been forthcoming with you guys and um, and it's happened now twice. We're, we're undergoing it, uh, you know, time and again. And we figured that, hey, this is a good opportunity to kind of be forthcoming with all of you guys about what we are kind of seeing here at Ed First Alliance. And again, I, I just want to say that um, when we talk about anti-Semitism as we will tonight, it's not not liking Jews. It's not disliking me because I'm Jewish. Um, what what you think of me, uh, that's your business, right? D you know, done, I might not like it, but hey, um, it's the robbing of dignity. And we're going to talk about, um, Suter, we're going to talk a little bit about what happened has happened with our organization. We want you guys to know, hopefully be a part of the solution. But we're also gonna talk about how this affects teachers who are having to go through this DEI training and renounce their whiteness, their Christianity, their um, 
you know, who they are and, and black teachers, we hear this all the time are having to assume the role as victim, even if they don't feel that they are. And, and that's a terrible place to put anybody and right there, I can deal with what they say about me, but you should never try to make somebody feel like a victim that isn't. Or less than or inferior. Or, exactly. Um, our rights are that we are all equal. And that comes from any, you know, Christian, Judaism, all of that is God made us from his cloth. We're equal, no matter what we look like, period. Right. They're taking that away from us. Well, yes. And so as I will um, underscore this evening, you know, this has affected us because we've had to pay um, thousands of dollars to defend ourselves in a, in a lawsuit uh, that was completely made up out of whole cloth. Uh, we've had the FBI called on us. We've had the police called on us. We've had our events uh, that have tried to be shut down. We have had our um, our funding challenged. We've had our donors called. We've had our supporters called. We've had everything um, done to shut us down. And I'm here to tell you, we're, <laughs> they can try, um, but we're not going to let them get away with it. Hate, we cannot allow hate to win. Um, won't do it. Can't do it. So... All right, so I'm going to begin with um, with what has happened uh, about a year and a half or a year and a couple of months ago. Um, we have been targeted by a woman named Carrie Donovan, and I'm going to let me just give you a warm up right here for what this is. So this is this is Carrie Donovan in action. Just to get a little bit of background, she um, she calls herself a journalist. She trolls other Jewish journalists. Here she is asking a journalist, uh, Jamie Suskind, who is I mean, he's kind of a middle of the road guy, but she's asking him, hey, can I have an interview? He's like, Carrie, you know, looking at your, your timeline, I'm not into it, right? I mean, and then she goes and she attacks him, immediately goes and calls him a Nazi Jew. How did she know that he was a Jew? The last name, right? She calls him a, some sort of Nazi Jew that worship Muslims and hates liberty seeking Jews so much that he designs a way to kill off our free speech. Okay, when you start bringing people's religion into the conversation, when it's not a part of the conversation, you might be an anti-Semite, especially when you're calling someone a Nazi Jew. All right, here's another one, another example. Here's another guy, Abe Seaman. He's a journalist. He's not my favorite, let me tell you. I happen to be Jewish. Uh, you're a coward who refuses to be Jewish enough to defend your own liberty. It's embarrassing. You'd rather appease a lunatic like Elizabeth Warren, bootlicker. All right. Uh, you know, bringing somebody's religion into the conversation when it wasn't a part of the conversation for no reason, kind of a big deal. Now, she'd already called this guy a Nazi. So here he is saying, you're a Christian pretending to be Jewish and you are going to lecture me about being Jewish enough. I mean, you know, he's a fair point. All right. All right, so here we go. I am Christian and I am Jewish. <laughs> um, okay. This isn't Messianic Jewish. <laughs> no. This is a, a um, I'm going to abuse you and be an anti-Semite and I can get away with it because I'm going to call myself whatever. It's called an American. The implication is he's not because he's a Jew. You get it? Well, I think what gets me here too is Judeo-Christian means they're rooted from the same place biblically. It is not a religion. Right. This is what we're dealing with here though, right? Right. This, yeah. this is so I'm just giving you a background into who we're getting ready to launch into and talk about. Okay. And he says, you're full of blah, blah, blah. You can't be a Christian and a Jew. We said the same thing, but I think in nicer terms. All right. Yeah. This is called deicide. So when you talk about Jesus killing, uh, you know, Jews killing Jesus, uh, the State Department of the United States calls that anti-Semitism. Uh, so uh, uh, most people call that anti-Semitism. And uh, yeah, it's a problem, even though a full fourth of the United States believes that, according to a Pew poll a few years ago, uh, it's because usually because they're ignorant, right? Um, yep. A lot of because because, by the way, they did that poll, you guys, and the poll it's the more educated one is the less likely they are to think that. So a lot of people are just kind of mistaken, right? All right. Jews kill Jesus. Let's not pretend mm. 
Yeah. I mean, actually, the Romans killed well, Jesus, but we won't yes, go there. Exactly. All right. <laughs> But here she goes. Jews set him up, framed him, lied about him, hand him over to the Romans, blah, blah, blah. Truth is not hate. And then says to a Jew, uh, you know, if people hate you, it's for good reason, no doubt. Because you're Jewish and you killed Jesus. So this is kind of what we're dealing with here. Um, now, so let's flash forward. Uh, my first really interaction with uh, Carrie Donovan coming after us, I think it was like uh, last February. You might have remembered this story. If you're living in Charlotte, okay, if you're living in Charlotte, you know that um, there was a junior high school that had a teacher. I guess it was a test. There was a test, a couple test questions or a book they read. And anyway, it minimized, it either denied the Holocaust altogether or basically minimized the Holocaust. Totally. And uh, you'll see Brooke here. Brooke's a Jewish mom. I'm a Jewish mom. We had a Facebook Live to discuss this. So up pops Carrie Donovan on our Facebook Live trolling us. In fact, she said a lot of things that I didn't snapshot it quickly enough and I, it was gone. But one of the things she said was, look, Holocaust denial should be taught in schools because the Holocaust is taught in schools, to be fair. That's okay. So this gives you an idea. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. She is all over the place. She's she's a little nuts. All right. Mm -hmm. So these two women, Sloan and Brooke, are making up a story about what happened on a Facebook page. And other participants say it didn't happen. Well, no kidding. <laughs> People uh, that critics say that we're making things up all the time. That's not a big deal. Right. <clears throat> we don't have to invent stories about CRT. In other words, shh, you're Jewish. You don't get the right to talk about Holocaust denial. And anyway, mm -hmm. Talking about Holocaust denial is very dangerous because we are going to damage the Republicans. We never brought up politics in this. So we, but that's the theme of anti Semitism. Jews are the outsiders. They have their own little cabal, they have their own little plan to undermine. It's us versus them mentality. Us versus them. We're dangerous. We're Jewish. We're complaining about something that, guess what? It's in our purview to do so. If you don't like it, you don't have to watch, but we're dangerous. Pay attention, y'all. She's advocating Holocaust minimization as damaging Republicans. So she goes on. Also, critical race theory doesn't care about Jews other than, I don't know, she can't spell worth a damn, other than to set up the Holocaust to start a conversation about slavery and start a diversionary fight to keep people divided. Um, Holocaust denial also keeps people divided. I've got news. This offense from a Jewish mom is a diversion. Okay, so, you know, you're robbing. Again, it's not about not liking Jews. It's about denying Jews the same rights that other people have. Right? That's what it's about. That's anti-Semitism. She, she can't stop doing this, by the way. So she got, and this is maybe a month later. She continues to do it, okay? Sloan makes money off of Republicans. By the way, this, this person has accused EFA of being fraudulent since our very founding, that mm -hmm. I'm a troublemaker making money off of Republicans. <clears throat> that is the, the greedy Jew, right? The outsider, the, uh, the shifty charlatan, um, chaos maker over things that don't exist. Um, well, you know, the Free Beacon and about five other outlets wrote about it because it was newsworthy. It's a problem, right? I mean, what do you think? I'm, I'm, con okay, so I'm a little confused about her wanting to teach the Holocaust denial. Right. So is she denying it or she wants people to see it from the truth for the people that are nuts up? I really don't know, but based on her prior history, what do you think? I, I mean, I just, I don't understand why she would want denial taught in school. I, I guess that's where things just get a little. She, well, the, imp the implication was it wasn't fair to teach about the Holocaust. So to make it, more uh, okay. fair, to make it more fair, you should teach about denial too. So, and, and, and this is just 
in her view, then if we teach slavery is wrong, then we should also teach about the people that think slavery is right. Correct. Right. Like, you know, how you, you can see how that could be a huge dark hole. You could jump down. I don't know. That's just well, as a Jew, really I, find strange. It very, I find it very offensive. Of course, it's offensive. It's offensive to me. My grandfather fought in World War II. I yeah. mean, it's yeah, I find it offensive, um, uh, very offensive. But again, what she would say is I don't have a right to be offended. Only she does. Right. Double standards. Yeah. So who, who I'm pointing out as I'm seeing these, she literally goes to find Jewish people to pick fights with. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, yep. So here's another example of of this, uh, you know, the the greedy outsider. Okay, the shifty outsider. We're only after big money. We damage real groups. In other words, we're a danger to Republicans. We're a danger to grassroots efforts. We're dangerous, right? We're being denied the same right as other parent groups, Moms for Liberty, all kinds of other groups. We it, it, we're singled out. Why? Well, okay, um, let's see. EFA destroying conservative populist activist groups for money and to ruin the MAGA movement. So we're destroying the MAGA movement now. And is that lost on you, that picture? No. I mean, I mean our group isn't just you. I mean, and I, I'm not taking away from who you are, but especially where it says oh. the liberal Jewish group. I mean, we have very, well, this, very varying backgrounds. Well, this was, this was an early partner of ours. Oh, okay. An organization called Lawfare, um, which by the way, in liberal and conservative, they defend um, the rights of Jewish students all over the country. Because as you are well aware, on college campuses, you do have far lefties uh, you know, coming up against mm -hmm. Jewish students. So yep. what she was trying to do is say, wow, look, the Jews, right, are untrustworthy mm -hmm. and shifty. Um, and they just want your money. Correct, which is a, a total theme the entire time. Um, so this is who she is. Uh, her name's Carrie Donovan. She is a writer for Ben Burkwam. I don't know if I spelled that right. And for Davis Harris Jr. I know that's going to make you upset because you know, you like him, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, just to, just to, to tell you guys again, you know, this is a, um, she's got a, a prominent platform for which to spew her, um, nonsense. I don't know if she writes anti-Semitic stuff there, but she certainly does, um, come after us again. She's called the FBI on us. She's called the police on us. She's made a report with the attorney general. She's contacted our donors. She's contacted our supporters. She's tried to cancel not one, but two separate events. She's called our, every, everybody we do business with um, to make the allegations that were fraud and um, run by a greedy Jew. Of course, there are six people on our board. We have, I mean, literally hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of close volunteers, network of tens of thousands. Um, mm -hmm. so this is, this whole movement is bigger than us, but that's what anti-Semites do they distill it down and they want to cancel you because you're Jewish and whatever organization you have, they want to tear it down. There is zero legitimacy to this at all. Okay. Now we have called the police on her for stalking. Um, dropped the, we agreed to drop the charges. In fact, last week, because her lawyer promised that she would be good mm -hmm. and she is a mother. She's a mother, so I, I didn't, you know, I didn't really want to uh, to have that as a charge. And uh, you know, just no sooner had did we drop the charges on Friday, did she start right back up again with the disparagement? But hey, can't do anything about disparagement, mm -mm. right? It's it's taking the action. Um, yep. so if she comes and stalks again, we'll be right through it again. So that's Carrie Donovan. Now let me bring you up to to uh, the most recent one. Sorry, let me pop out of that. So we supported a candidate who happens to be black for the primary. And Cuban. And Cuban, yeah. 
Mm -hmm. um, so for the primaries and we will be supporting him in the general. And um, we took a lot of flack from a group now that we know is, um, you know, led by a virulent anti-Semite. And now that group has turned on us. So this week I've had a variety of uh, videos circulating about me, giving my home address out, um, saying things about my husband. Um, again, saying that we are committing crimes, uh, like having a, a super PAC that is illegitimate and not formed correctly. That is 100% categorically false. Mm -hmm. um, making a lot of, of accusations, but when I and innuendos, a lot of them were just innuendos, which can make it feel a lot worse to people than it is. Well, you know, to be fair, I called this group twice mm -hmm. and I said, what you're saying is incorrect. Let me set the record straight. Um, didn't know why they didn't call me, but I think now that, um, you know, now that we got this email, I think we know why. Okay. So um, this is a honey badger group. Uh, the guy who said this is Frank Gertz, who is a spokesman for the honey badger tribe. You can find them on Facebook. This is Kelly Wiggins, who is doing the videos. Um, so this email goes out about me on, on Friday. Um, here are the, some of the things it says. I understand that many people are afraid to name the Jew. He wasn't afraid he named me, okay? Uh, he called me a bossy Jewess who has been slandering my associates and now myself for asking about the work history of her favored candidate. Well, we have a lot of candidates that we support. Um, the favored candidate he's talking about happens to be black. The guy that they were giving a hard time to um, and we were defending and will continue to defend against racists mm -hmm. any day of the week. Um, these are just a few pull quotes from his uh, disgusting screed, but I want you to see what anti-Semitism look, looks like. So Zionism means a Jew who um, believes that Israel is a spiritual home for Judaism. In fact, evangelicals believe that Israel is their spiritual home as well. I was gonna say, it's not just Jewish people, but- No, it's not. Muslims as well believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Zionism, so Sloan, is a direct threat to the vision of America as we know it. Just as Carrie Donovan said, I was a direct threat, and we are a direct threat to, what was it, Republicans, the MAGA movement, grassroots. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, Everybody we support, pretty much. Yeah. So the Zionists are a death cult which worships Satan and refuses Jesus. Their philosophy stated clearly in the Talmud, their Bible revisionist Jewish history makes clear that they are the chosen people by the vengeful God of the Old Testament and that they are expected to enslave or kill all non-believers. It does not respect all God's creatures as ends of themselves, but considers them all fair game to be used as means to suit Zionist ends. Um, I'm just gonna stop here and say, <laughs> the Jews aren't the ones enslaving or killing people. Just gonna throw that out there. Yeah, exactly. So, but again, you know, this is the, this is true um, KKK Nazi mm -hmm. style. This is Nazi style um, anti-Semitism. Um, I'll continue a source of information. Oh, he wrote this email. He said, he said look, look, man. I'm just giving you all a source of information for those of you who want to learn. By the way, this went out to hundreds of people about yours truly. I'm just giving this a source of information for those who want to learn about plans and intentions of the Zionists and to understand why Zionism is a direct threat to American values as it is anti-Christian. The Zionists are a death cult. I think we went through that mm -hmm. already. Don't need to do it again. And he wants to tell me, please stop pretending this is an attack on you. Hmm. You're not that important. Hmm. Gee, I wonder how well, I got mixed up. Yeah, who's he attacking then? Yeah, yeah. It, it's it, it's very direct on me. Um, the Zionists are the ruling clique in Israel, and they constitute the largest unregistered foreign lobbyist organization in the U.S. They control the votes. This sounds like Ilhan Omar. 
of half the Congress, both reps and senators. Their money controls the actions of both political parties. They're the biggest donor by orders of magnitude. I'm not sure that's true. Um, he's a Holocaust denier. It's mm -hmm. a crime. He, he's lamenting that he's like, damn it, it's a crime now to ridicule various Jewish hoaxes, such as six million killed in uh, by the Germans during World War II in the Holocaust, okay? So and notice how Carrie Donovan, obsessed with the Holocaust, right? That really made her mad. And then this Nazi style guy really makes him mad. So it's really making anti-Semites mad when you when Jews have the audacity suitor to talk about the Holocaust. It makes him mad. Never mind that my husband's grandmother's family was completely wiped out, and that we do have a historical memory about that and trauma. Um, mm -hmm. It makes anti-Semites mad to see Jews talking about that. Um, helpful to know who your enemies are. That would be me. Um, and this Kelly Wiggins character with the Honey Badger Tribe has given out my, um, repeatedly given out my home address. Um, her leader is, uh, we know what he writes um, about Jews. And it, you know, I believe they're pointing the finger at me to have harm come to me um, and to certainly incite um, some anti Semitic. Um, feelings and hostility. Absolutely. I mean, that's exactly what they're doing. So, uh, uh, yeah. Mm. yeah. I mean, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's tough to have that much hate um, directed at, at you or me. Um, you know, I have only encountered anti-Semitism really three times in my life. And it has been, um, twice, and I mean twice, Carrie Donovan, now this, and then about a year before that with a guy who's locally, he owns a, a newspaper here and uh, brought me in. He goes, I want, I bring, bring you in here because I want some of that Jew money. And I know that Jews control the media. So, I mean, it, it's only been within the last little bit. It's, you know, and I have to tell you that these people um, call themselves Republican. This guy swears up and down that he represents Christian conservatives. That's his thing. No, that's not how Christian conservatives no. act. <laughs> no, no. As a Christian conservative, that is not how we act. Ever, ever. No, oh. you know, and look, I, evangelicals are Jews' best friends. I mean, we have tons of evangelicals in our movement. Um, and I have to tell you, there's no better friend to Israel and the Jews than evangelicals. I'll tell you that. Um, so no, this is, this is not... We know that, that this is fake. Uh, Carrie Donovan right. calls herself a, a conservative grassroots uh, organizer, but I can tell you, how many grassroots conservative organizers do you know that would go and troll and harass Jews? Apparently that group you just showed <laughs> and Carrie Donovan, that's about it. Most grassroots want to have as many people come in to their arms or however you want to put it to help because that's what a grass movement is grassroots movement sorry yeah it's the movement of the people absolutely of all stripes you cannot yep. yeah i mean if you're not going to allow blacks into your movement if you're not going to allow jews into your movement if you're not going to allow muslims into your movement or hindus or asians i mean that is not a populist movement absolutely not and conservative movement. Well, what we're trying to do is we are trying to bring everybody together for our for parental rights, standing up for our children. And and I don't know why that, well, I do know why it scares them so much. And that, that's what it is, because they know that we are going to do it. We will stop what they're doing. And it's a slow, long process, but we're going to get there. Well, anti-Semitism happens most often when a movement doesn't feel it can make room for another group. Right. Right. That's why racism happens as well. They don't mm -hmm. feel like they can make room for another group. Um, we're going to move on to critical race theory because this is something that you know very well. I mean, yes. you sat through how many um, really oppressive teacher trainings while you were at Charlotte Mecklenburg schools? I personally sat through four. <laughs> it, but it was a year. It was four, 
but it was a year long process. Okay. That's a lot for a year. It is. And wow. really I can say it started the year before that with what we're going to talk about as well. Right. Because the, the thing about critical race theory um, and the reason, one of the reasons why I'm so animated about it is that, I mean, Jews understand anti-Semitism. It's something that, you know, again, I'm lucky. I haven't really experienced it. I mean, have I experienced people that don't like Jews? Yeah. But not people that have actually full on, you know, tried to stop me from doing something or minimize me to what I am. Right. Um, but this is something new for white folks and uh, Christians. Yeah. Christians are persecuted as well. Christians are persecuted as well. So it's, you know, it's something that I don't ever want you guys to anyone to get used to. Right. I don't want anyone to get used to Now, can you see my matrix of oppression here? Yes. Okay. So this again is something that you, a test that you had to do in one of your trainings that again, tries to boil you down into these stupid ass groups. Mm -hmm. Tell me about this training. Okay. So this, I do believe was the first one we took. And I think this one, um, they wanted us to go through, they gave us this matrix we were supposed to share, obviously, in each of the social identity categories, what we were. So if you want to go through it, obviously, I'm white. I'm a biological woman. So apparently that, I'm not sure. I think now looking back on it a few years later, biological women would probably be all the way over with biological men. But, right. you know, that's probably changed since then. Um, I am, I guess, gender conforming. I guess that's where it goes. I'm a gender conforming woman. Right. So um, are, I'm heterosexual. Yeah. Yeah. I'm middle class. You know, I, I'm, I'm pretty much on the privileged side all the way down. I'm Protestant. I'm able-bodied. I'm an adult. So what they wanted you to do with this is once you figure that out, you, I would look at this or what they wanted me to do is I would look at this and say, well, I am privileged. And then they wanted us to go further about saying how we could start unpacking why we're privileged based on these, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight things. Nothing else about my life, nothing else about anything else that I've gone through how I grew up. It doesn't talk about any of that. Just where I am right now, apparently I am privileged. So you're boiled down to just your, your superficial characteristics. Mm -hmm. And unless and until you want to renounce, I'm just assuming, unless and until you want to renounce some of that. Mm -hmm. That's exactly where, where it was going. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So what they want because so that one was the like like I said that was the beginning of it we're just supposed to think about why we're privileged and how we fit in that privileged bubble it's total Marxism I mean this is the beginning of indoctrinating teachers into Marxism and sadly a lot of teachers have already did that in college and have now come through especially the younger teachers and as you can see the turnover rate in teachers right now, especially in the state of North Carolina, is so high that a lot of the percentage of teachers are under 30. Um, and, and, and that is really when that group was targeted coming up. Because I'm, I'm not much older than that, but I can look back at my high school and college years and see that it was very different than it is even was 10 years after me. So I, I think they wanted, because the, the younger generation is going to go right into, oh my gosh, I'm privileged. I need to renounce it and figure out how I can give my privilege to somebody else. Ah, so let me stop you right there. So this is about um, keeping, it's, it's the same thing, is it's keeping you so that you don't have the same rights as other people. 
right? I mean, it, exactly that they want to say, hey, you've got too many rights. You, you've already, you know, you're already privileged. Just like, you know, these anti-Semites, you're, you're superior, you're greedy, you're this, you're that. Mm -hmm. so just go away. Just go yep. away. And that's what they're saying to teachers, guys. That's what they're saying to teachers who sit through this stuff. Not only sit through it, now I'm going to put up this example of what actually happens, how it gets operationalized, because here's where it comes full circle, okay? Let me see if I can find where I put this. Okay, here we go. Hmm. Tell me about this incident. Okay, so this, um, well, it says two days ago, but obviously it was a screenshot from right after, I guess, let's see, the election what? that year was what, November 2nd? Yes, yeah. And it took over a week or so for Biden to be announced. So this is after or after they did call him president elect so this is boston as you can see is a fox news screenshot um people full and full in the streets like i see a little bit of pavement but not much so this is also when you know wear your mask don't go outside you know i you think had they had actually mask. just and you they had literally just here. yeah yeah they literally just sent our kids back to virtual learning at this point or we're right on the cusp of doing it so it was in discussions you know we weren't going to school on Wednesdays and you know things like that so I posted it and I said I thought you people were so afraid of COVID and then I said I said what I said because I meant it <laughs> it's the same it was the same people you know, parading like through the streets. You were highlighting hypocrisy. Yeah. And it's exactly right. Because all of 2020 was, well, until now, has been full of hypocrisy. And, and that's what I meant. Face value. Well, I get pulled into my principles. All, okay, let me step back. That day, apparently everybody at school was talking about it when I walked in. Um Talking about I was threatened post. by another talking about your post. talking about that post. Let me just pop in. How many, mm -hmm. how many diversity trainings had you had all the teachers had before this incident? One. Okay. That one you just showed. So okay. that's the the one that was the first one that was given in September. But the remarkable thing is you had been at this school for what nine years at the time you'd mm -hmm. always gotten along with every you worked with black teachers white teachers no conflict this training happens and then this post happened okay go yeah okay so i walk in and, and you know you can feel when something's not right when you walk in too and and my team is was always very outspoken about hating Trump. I was pretty much didn't really say anything at school one because I didn't think it was the place. They don't really need to know what's going on um, in my political views and because I don't think it should be talked about in front of children. Especially elementary children that's not what we're there to do and I will stand by that until the day I die. So um, then I hear them in the hall and this is when kids are coming in. A teacher um, actually threatens me bodily harm that if she had seen me on the street after that post, she would have kicked my ass, is what she said. This Black is with teacher, students. White in the hall. teacher? Black teacher. Okay. So that, you know, that, that'll shake anybody up. I mean, I'm not really afraid, was really afraid of her, but I mean, it also makes you very anxious to go in any kind of meeting or to be out in the hallway just because you don't want that relationship with somebody you're on a team with that you're working with did you feel it was because of your skin color absolutely uh, or or my beliefs i mean at that point i didn't i'm not sure the skin color popped into my head um i was a minority on that team anyway so didn't really 
think it one way or another because I never treated any of them any differently than I treated anybody else. So I guess maybe that's my privilege is that I, it didn't cross my mind because, you know, being colorblind is racist too. And that's another part of that first training that we were taught is that being colorblind is racist. Um, so that whole day I was, I was upset and I had texted our, um, one of the, the, my brain is escaping me for names right now, but she helped us with our, do I have to edit this? <laughs> She helped us with our uh, planning and stuff like we had a planning meeting. There we go. Okay. Uh, we had a planning meeting um, and I texted her and I said, look, I don't feel comfortable being in a room today. I just need my anxiety is really high. I told her what had happened. I said, I just kind of need to chill and we'll regroup and I'll come talk to you this afternoon. So I kind of went on about my day kind of stayed in my room and the kids ate in the room we weren't really allowed to leave much anyway so it wasn't really that difficult to kind of shelter myself in place there um that afternoon after we put the kids on the bus and sent them home our principal came to my classroom and asked me to see her and the assistant principal in her office and my first thought was, oh, she actually said something to our principal. So maybe she's going to, you know, come talk to me about what had happened this morning, thinking, oh, thank goodness, somebody's going to kind of smooth this over so we can figure it out. Um, well, I get in there and she has pulled up on her screen my Facebook post. And she said, a lot of people are very upset about the post you put up. And, and I was... I mean, confused. I, I was pretty vocal about not believing in masks and thinking all of that kind of stuff was ridiculous at that point. And so I, I didn't know how anybody would be offended by that. And so she kept saying, what people are you talking about <sighs> over? And I, I'm like the people in the picture. And, and that was like my honest answer and then it clicked she wants me to say black people so I didn't I went oh yeah I said uh the democrats in the picture I mean I said and she just kind of looked at me I said well if they voted for Biden then they're happy I'm assuming they're liberal democrats and she was like well the way you put it means black people and I I pointed at the picture and I said can you tell me, you, one, can you point at one person in this picture and tell me their race? I'm stunned. Yeah. But that really was about skin color because that's, mm -hmm. um, because you are white, you're held up to a double standard, right? You're not able to say you people. Yeah. Without, okay. So the, and, and again, you know, this is the thing is that when we have this CRT where everything's racialized and every everything's um, you know, uh, you're demonized, it's it's obviously anti-unity. But mm -hmm. I mean, it makes you, I mean, I'm not gonna speak for you, but I did I knew you then and I talked to you back then and it and I I remember when you and I talked that it was really the first time that you had been able to tell someone about what happened and how it felt and that you felt alone. Exactly. Because after I walked out of the office, one, I was told that they had called HR and um, it was suggested I take the post down, um, but that they couldn't make me. Well, yeah, because I have freedom of speech. Uh, they had called HR, HR had um, declined they were going to write me up um, they had declined because I hadn't done anything to go against teacher policy or their social media policy or anything like that um, but probably for well it was right before Thanksgiving so it was probably only two weeks before they sent us out out for Thanksgiving um, and then they put us to virtual until at January but even coming back in January, like I was ostracized. Like I had a few friends 
they didn't want to talk to me there either because then they they would have gotten ostracized you know it, it was one of those like slippery slopes that that's really when it started that I was sick driving to school every day I was having panic attacks going to work like and it's not even that I really felt like I did something wrong but who wants to go into a work environment where everybody's saying things that aren't true about you and I I think yes. one it taught me not to care but you know two that kids read that into that too and I think that was what I was afraid of more than anything maybe was parents getting wind of it yep um because my students I say are my my second children I care about what their families think and how they know that I care for their students so it was one of those uh, I I was afraid it would rub off that way well that's the thing is that you know that's how these haters get you Right. I mean, they are, um, you know, this Carrie Donovan has, you know, whether it's Carrie Donovan's of the world or your principal, they right. want you to live with less human rights than someone else in that situation. Right. So me as a group leader, um, I don't I shouldn't have the same rights. Why? Mm-mm. Well, one of the reasons is because I'm Jewish. Someone that's going to get that pissed off about two Jewish moms talking about their feelings on the Holocaust. Well, I mean, you know, that and your principal expected you and others in, in, in your school to live with under their directives, what you should be saying. I'll tell you another thing too about these anti-Semites, uh, both um, Carrie Donovan and this uh, honey badger guy. Mm-hmm. When you fight back, when you dare to fight back, that's they're going to use that against you right yep. they used uh an email that i fought back on something didn't share the full response right carrie donovan's used that to say that you're a bully to say that you're aggressive etc and it's because well i mean it's based on your race it is based on yep. your race it is based on and, the- and, and that goes in to me going later on fox and saying the truth And that is a threat to them. It is. It is. And so, you know, we need to keep fighting back on this. We need Mm -hmm. to keep fighting back. I mean, look, I go, by the way, I go by my middle name Sloan, have since I was 14 years old. Um, Mm -hmm. And it's interesting, but these anti-Semites, they like to say Jennifer Sloan Rackmuth. Here's why. Because a Jew is shifty. They're not trusted. They're using it as Mm. evidence that I'm a fraud, right? And they both do it. It's interesting because they, because they both do it. Um, Anyone else could go by their middle name, but a Jew can't do that. Right. Because there are millions of people that go by their middle name. Exactly. But, and and now they're even haranguing me because guess what? I have a maiden name, Mm. not even kidding you. So in other words, you know, for you, anyone could put up these posts. In mm-hmm. fact, you told me and you showed me there were posts far worse than that were terrible, actually. They can do it. But when you do it, it's evidence you're a racist. When I go by my middle name, it's evidence that I'm a fraud. And so mm-hmm. that's what these haters do. We're not going to, we're not, you know, I have to tell you for a very long time, I, well, I haven't told you guys about it. I have kept it to myself because I felt like um, it would be a distraction. And now that it's happened twice, um, I think it's God's way of saying, look, you've got to speak up about this because it's it dovetails right into exactly what we are fighting. It's the, it's the you know, you wanted to keep it quiet because you didn't want to make a big deal. You didn't want to seem like a complainer. I did the same thing. And so we're not going to do that anymore. So every instance of hate around here, no matter who it's directed to, uh, we're not going to keep silent about that anymore. And and we shouldn't. No, no, we absolutely should Sometimes, I mean, you can't keep silent and tell other people to speak out either. I know. <laughs> I started to feel guilty about that. <laughs> well, I, did, I wasn't directing that at you and I don't think you have anything to feel guilty about because you also know that, I mean, we have so many different groups in our one group. So it 
they're attacking you personally and I can see why you wouldn't want to bring that to us but you're not alone in the fight so your fight's my fight is our fight because they're not just attacking you they're attacking the whole organization at this point they're yeah they're definitely they definitely want to put our organization out of business just like they wanted to put you out of a job just like they want to put you know others out of a job and just like they want to put uh black students out of an education yep. they want to put black students out of an education why they are the the enormous amount of training that you did for this DEI was during a time when learning loss was at an epic, mm -hmm. epic rate, especially in Charlotte. So instead of teaching you guys how to overcome learning loss better, giving you help on that, using money for it, they robbed Black children of an education in particular because from what I read, uh, Black students in particular had the most learning loss. I mean, maybe they, yep. you know, that's what I read. So yeah, I mean, so any any money and any time that you guys diverted yourself from the classroom and from direct instruction, that robbed students of what they needed the most. So they they're, they're saying that hey, if you can realize that you're you're guilty um, of you know uh, black suppression, that's going to help you know students. I mean, this is. Guys, this is dramatically different from the way that Martin Luther King, Booker T. Washington, Malcolm X, Frederick Douglass um, addressed the issue of Black achievement. Mm -hmm. They wanted the standards raised. Mm -hmm. CRT is trying to blame others for their skin color. That's going to accomplish absolutely nothing. Well, it's because it's straight Marxism. Yeah. And the same with anti-Semitism. It all goes into that when you strip somebody of who they are, if that person is not strong enough, which a lot of people aren't, and, and I'm, I'm seeing that right now, a lot of people are not strong enough to deal yeah. with it, then they can raise them back up the way they want them to be. And then they don't have a individual perspective. They have a collective and, you know, reading more into it, there's different collectives that, that they, that people have that start joining these movements like Antifa and BLM, and, and that's what they want. They don't, and they don't want them. And, and reading loss is like the number one thing to take away, because if you can't read, you can't figure out things on your own. Well, you Jeff can't go that. look yeah. into what you can do and who you are. You're not. You're then can be an individual if you can read. Well, you'll be permanently enslaved. That's what yeah. Frederick Douglass said. Look, look at some. Exactly of the the arab population i mean in in some of the african population actually you know there are yep. governments getting enormously wealthy keeping mm -hmm. all all of this money and really robbing children of an education and yep, that's and exactly that, right you know i mean that's an extreme version but you know any any of that that we see we're calling that out all the time prioritize reading literacy you have to mm -hmm. do that Yep. So, I mean, we're a, we're an organization that above all, um, you know, we're for promoting human dignity um, and opportunity. Mm -hmm. And so that's, you know, we're going to live those values. We're going to call this out when we see it. Uh, we are not going to let this stop us. Um, oh, you know, we have been accused of having a fraudulent pack. Um, we do have a, I mean, it, anything that they can do to to marginalize us or to try to, they will. We do, not only do we have a, uh, a 527 super PAC, we also have a professional treasurer who manages um, tons of different organizations just like ours to keep them compliant. Now look, the FEC, there's reporting four times a year. They monitor every donation that we get, how it is used, um, everything. It's really the most stringent organization that you can have. Even with a 501c3, uh, you know, you can hide a lot of that, a lot of that. In fact, there's a lot of shenanigans going on with 501c3s, a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, look at the voting stuff with the uh, Zuckerbucks. Look yeah. at, you can look at a lot of things. Um, we have a higher level of scrutiny than that. But again, haters will do whatever they can. They will use whatever is at their disposal to try to take you down. And, and it's easy to hate. 
it's hard to hate in public. Yeah. If they're able to say, oh, no, I don't hate Jews. It's just about this. Oh, I'm not mad that they talked about the Holocaust. It's just that she's a fraud. It's, yeah. If right. they want to give extremism, and, and it's gotten to that point. It's gotten to that point, but we're going to call it out. We're not going to fight back. So thank you guys for joining us tonight. Suter. Thank you. We got it. All right. Yeah, we do. All right. We got this, guys. Yep. All right. We'll have a good evening and we'll be back with you later this week.